message. The series is titled Things That Destroy Us. Things That Destroy Us. There are many things we do that destroy us. Sometimes we do them and we're not aware we are doing them. Sometimes we are aware we are doing them, we're not, but we're not able to stop them. And somehow we hope that they will not destroy us. But there are things we do that destroy us, all of us. And I'm going to take about four of those things, uh, major ones, the heavy hitters uh, that we do that destroy us. Today, uh, my subtitle on things that destroy us, I'm going to talk about bitterness. Bitterness. Bitterness can destroy us. And uh, many times we live life very, very bitter. How many of you have read Charles Dickens' book, The Great Expectations? How many of you read Great Expectations when you were in school? Let's see, let's see. Okay. The rest of you, what have you been reading? Everybody should have read Great Expectations. In Great Expectations, uh, which was one of the storybooks, uh, novels that uh, most secondary schools would use for literature, there is a, an interesting character there, a woman called Miss Havisham. Miss Havisham was uh, quite an interesting woman because she was disappointed by a man who was going to marry her. And... Um, when uh, she, she had a lot of money and this man really wanted to marry her because of her money uh, she was advised against it but somehow she still believed that uh, it will work so on her wedding day she got dressed in her wedding clothes had her wedding cake everything is ready she goes to the altar at 10 minutes to 9 and somehow she gets the information that uh, the man who is going to marry her is not coming the, the the wedding is not coming on and miss havisham is very very uh disappointed and distraught because of what happens she instructs that all the clocks in her house should be stopped at 10 minutes to nine so if you went to her house every clock reads 10 minutes to nine stopped nothing moved after that she never took off her wedding clothes so she wears her wedding clothes uh, the, the wedding cake is still there uh, and, uh, and uh, she, she lives a very, very sad, bitter life. She's very angry. She's very disappointed. Her life is frozen in time. She's not able to move on with her life. And after some time, she decides, you know, maybe I need to get on with my life. So she requests that uh, somebody be brought to her. So they find a girl to come and live with her called Estella. And she starts to train this girl. But for some reason, although Miss Havisham had good intentions for Estella, she begins to poison this girl with a lot of bitterness against men. Because of the man who disappointed her. And she, she trains this girl to be uh, a very difficult girl who would also break the hearts of other men. So in, in, in time, this girl, Estella, grows up and she also becomes uh, a very devious person. And uh, the narrator of the story in Great Expectations is Pip. And uh, Estella ends up breaking this guy's heart. Eventually, uh, Miss Havisham gets to know what she's done. She regrets. Eventually, her whole house gets on fire. She gets burnt. Eventually, she dies. Quite a dramatic story. But it talks about what bitterness can do. A person who goes through an experience and begins to feel bad about the experience, she holds on to the experience for so long, and over time, begins to pass on the effects of that experience to somebody else. And that is what bitterness can do. It will destroy you in the end. And today, we're going to look at that uh, in our message. Please stand with me in your Bibles to Hebrews chapter 12. And we will read verses 14 to verse number 16. Hebrews chapter 12, 
verse 14 to verse number 16. We read this passage when I was teaching holiness to the Lord, but I'm going a little further from holiness to the Lord, and we're talking about things that destroy us. And it says in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14 to 16, are you there? Okay, it says, Pursue peace with all people, and holiness without which no one will see the Lord. Looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness spring, springing up cause trouble, and by this many become defiled lest there be any fornicator or profane person like Esau who for one muscle of food sold his birthright the word that is used and translated in the English as bitterness in the passage we read comes from a Greek word that means sharp or pointed the Greek word is Picros, P I K R O S, and it means sharp or pointed. Something that is sharp or something that is pointed. So you have the idea that bitterness has sharpness to it and it is pointed, it pierces. And when you taste it, it is sharp on your tongue. When a person is bitter, they are not sweet. When a person is bitter, they pierce other people and cause a lot of pain in other people's lives. When you read the passage we read, you will find two things that um, bitterness will do. The first, the Bible says, is that it causes defilement. It causes defilement. When a person is bitter, it defiles them and then it defiles other people people secondly bitterness hinders the grace of god on our lives you can have a person who is anointed good well-meaning who becomes bitter and for some reason every good thing in them is poisoned by that bitterness and when you get around them you become as bitter as they are and they poison you just like the introductory story i told of miss havisham who was poisoned because of somebody's disappointment and then she passes it on to somebody else who also causes bitterness in other people we have to be very careful in life that we don't become bitter and especially today as we are uh, honoring mothers it's very easy for mothers to become bitter because they feel they have spent so much invested so much in their children and if at a certain point either the child gets married or the child has other relationships that begin to conflict with their relationship mothers tend to get very bitter bitterness will poison you it will defile you and it will make you defile other people we're going to look at two case studies in the bible about two individuals who became bitter and we're going to look at the impact of their bitterness and then i'm going to talk to you about how to deal with bitterness in your life and how to deal with bitterness when it is in somebody's life the first case study is going to be from second samuel in fact, all of the two uh, will be from Second Samuel, but we'll be looking at two different people. Second Samuel chapter 13, that's our first study of how bitterness grows and how it functions. And this is bitterness within a family, because most of the time, a lot of the bitterness we have in life, they are within close quarters, in close proximity, either with family members, friends colleagues but they're always against people who are close to us or who used to be close to us 
there's a lot of bitterness in families sometimes family gatherings are not moments of happiness it's moments of bitterness little things spring up quarrels and you find people who were brought forth by the same parents fighting and killing one another and destroying one another and getting their own children involved and then it moves from one generation to the nephews and from nephews it goes to grandchildren and on and on and on the root of bitterness second samuel chapter 13 verse 1 and 2 it says after this absalom the son of david had a lovely sister whose name was tamar and amnon the son of david loved her amnon was so distressed over his sister tamar that he became sick for she was a virgin and it was improper for amnon to do anything to her now what happened was as you know david created a lot of problems he had too many wives and that's what happens when you have a polygamous situation you create unnecessary problems for your children for all of you men who are having children in different places you you may be having fun for yourself but the story after you may be very bitter because you are planting seeds that can become roots of bitterness now david had these women had children with them and he had one child called Tamar. Tamar and Absalom, that is another of David's sons, came from the same woman. But then they had a half brother called Amnon. And Amnon saw his half sister Tamar and had a lot of lust in her for her half sister. He, he, he wanted to sleep with a girl. And he pine in his heart for Tamar for so long that the Bible says he became sick for his own half sister so Amnon talked to one of his best friends to say to, to discuss his problem and his best friend gave him a very bad advice as to how to get Tamar well eventually through several processes you can read the rest of the story it's very filthy but you can read it uh, eventually Amnon rapes Tama and throws her away from the house in disgrace literally kicks her out of the house the Bible says after he had raped her hatred entered his heart for the girl he thought he loved and that's one thing about lust because lust is not love it is not enduring after it is satisfied it is replaced by hatred so Tama leaves the house and in those days when you were a virgin you put on especially if you're the child of, a, of the king and you were a virgin you had clothes you wore and so Tama leaves the house and she changed her clothes she's wearing sackcloth now and look at verse 19 of second samuel chapter 13 then it says then Tama put ashes on her head tore her robe of many colors and was that was on her and lay her hand on her head and went away crying bitterly and absalom her brother said to her has amnon your brother been with you but now hold your peace my sister he is your brother do not take this thing to heart so tama remained desolate in her brother absalom's house but when king david heard of all these things he was very angry and absalom spoke to his brother amnon neither good nor bad for absalom hated amnon because he had forced his sister tamar now what happened was immediately after this situation absalom sees tamar and he he, he inquires what's happening has, has amnon finally gotten you the sister crying says yes 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 and 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 absalom says don't worry it's okay no problem take it easy now you would think that because he says take it easy he himself is taking it easy but he says it's okay it's all right he's your brother it's okay he says all the nice things his father david hears of the thing he gets angry but does not do anything about it 
So the Bible says Absalom from that day onwards does not speak neither good nor bad to his brother who has raped his sister. It's, in other words, he doesn't talk to him. He keeps silent. Now, if you saw all this that is happening, you would think nothing has happened. Absalom is okay. He doesn't just talk to his brother. He's already encouraged his sister. Take it easy. Everything will be all right. You know, the kind of things that sometimes people talk about. They say, oh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. But there's a lot of hatred behind there. It doesn't matter. So the Bible says that Absalom hated Amnon. Okay. Now what happened? Verse 23 to 25. And it came to pass after two full years. I like, you know, the Bible has a way of emphasizing. After two full years. He didn't say just two years. Two full years when this situation has happened. That Absalom had sheep sharers in Baal Hazar, which is near Ephraim. So Absalom invited all the king's sons. Then Absalom came to the king and said, Kindly note, your servant has sheep sharers. Please let the king and his servants go with your servant. Verse 28, 29. Now Absalom had commanded his servant saying, Watch now, when Amnon's heart is merry with wine, and when I say to you, strike Amnon, then kill him. Do not be afraid. Have I not commanded you? Be courageous and valiant. So the servants of Absalom did to Amnon as Absalom had commanded. Then all the king's sons arose, and each one got on his mule and fled. So for two years, Absalom has been holding this thing and he's planning. So after two years, when he's having a party in his house, he goes to tell his father, the king, and says, Bring, you come with all your servants and, and the brothers. I'm having a party uh, and, and let, let, let them come and rejoice. And the king says, oh, no, 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 I can't come. He says, well, if you don't come, then bring your, let my brothers come and eat food, you know, have fun in my house. The king says, why do you want to do that? He says, well, you know, I just want to share uh, with my brothers. So the king says, okay, let your brothers come. So all the king's brothers go for the party in Absalom's house. This two years after the incident. And whilst they were there, Absalom had already told his servants, when you see that Amnon is happy, give him a lot of drink. Let him get drunk. Let him get boozed. And when he's boozed, rise up and kill him so exactly they do that they kill the man this is two full years after the incident bitterness had come how did the bitterness come his sister was defiled he was hurt the king his father did nothing about it and he kept it for two years planned it deliberately and executed his brother in cold blood you would think that would be the end of the story but it wasn't the end of the story after that the king david was angry and uh, he he banished absalom but absalom had a lot of bitterness not all, only against amnon but also against his father for doing nothing about the case when it happened so he starts scheming to take over the kingdom from david and eventually he succeeds and takes over the kingdom from david david the great warrior is now sent out of jerusalem because of a bitter son now let's look at the second case study chapter 15 second samuel now what is happening now is absalom after he had organized his coup d'etat against david is now building his team his 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 group and uh, he's selecting whom he can use i want you to follow this very carefully and let's see how bitterness works so in second samuel chapter 15 verse 12 it says then absalom sent for ahitophel note that name very carefully ahitophel the gilonite david's counselor from his city from Gilo, while he offered sacrifices and the conspiracy grew strong for the people with absalom continually increased in number now look at how the bible describes absalom one he's a trusted official of david he's david's counselor 
trusted official. He works with David. He's, he's the man whom David listens to. Secondly, the Bible says when they found him, he was offering sacrifices. So he's a devout worshiper. He's not a carnal man. He's a spiritual person. And he's a godly person in the sense that his advice, the Bible says you find later, was almost like a, the oracles of God. So he's a worshiper. He's a trusted official. He's very influential. Because the moment he joins Absalom, the Bible says the conspiracy grew stronger. Just one month's addition made the conspiracy strong. All right. Now, go to verse chapter 16. Chapter 16. Are you there? Chapter 16, Second Samuel, verse 20 to 23 follow this closely this is very important then absalom remember absalom is bitter he's now gathering people so he gathers ahitophel then absalom said to ahitophel remember ahitophel is an official of david he is highly respected he is very influential and he is a devout worshiper he goes to church because when they got him, he was making sacrifice. It's almost as if they went to church to, to recruit him. So going to church doesn't stop you from being bitter. Okay, we'll find out. I'm giving up the case. Okay. Then Absalom said to Ahithophel, Give advice as to what we should do. Give advice, Ahithophel, give advice. And Ahithophel said to Absalom, Go into your father's concubines, whom he has left to keep the house, and all Israel will hear that you are abhorred by your father. Then the hands of all who are with you will be strong. So they pitched a tent for Absalom on the top of the house, and Absalom went into... Verse 23. Now the, ab the advice of Ahithophel, which he gave in those days, was as if one had inquired at the oracle of God. So all the advice of Ahit, so was all the advice of Ahithophel, both with David and with Absalom. They said his advice was as if you've inquired from God. The question that we have to ask is, how could a spiritual man, a man who offers sacrifices, a man who is trusted in the society, wise, influential, give such a diabolic and dirty advice you, you see the advice he gave to absalom he says if you really want to win go and collect all your father's wives and sleep with them and this man is supposed to be godly he was found making sacrifices he was recruited from church now you would think that such an elderly man with a lot of wisdom would come and, and his advice would cool tempest. Probably he would tell Absalom, oh, take it easy, don't worry, it's okay, you know. No, 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 no. He's, he's raising the tension to higher levels. He's aggravating the situation. He's giving devilish advice. There are times when people you think should give good advice that some of the things that come out of their mouth you wonder where did they come from and now today's message so the question is why did ahitophel give such an advice why did he say that why did he tell uh, Absalom, go and sleep with your father's wives. What motivated him to come with such an advice? You'll find out. Okay. Now go to 2 Samuel chapter 23. We'll do a little bit of his genealogy. 2 Samuel 23 verse 34. There is a genealogical record there. It says... Eliphelet, don't name your child by that name. Eliphelet, the son of Ahazbai, the son of the Makatite. Forget about all of them. 
the one that is important for this Eliam the son of Ahithophel the Gilonite note that carefully Eliam the son of Ahithophel the Gilonite remember when Ahithophel was first introduced they said Ahithophel the Gilonite so he says Eliam the son of Ahithophel the Gilonite so in other words Ahithophel had a son called Eliam all right okay now go to second Samuel chapter 11 go back to chapter 11 chapter 11 verse 3 and 4 are you there all right you remember one what David saw when he was on top of his house so a young girl called Bathsheba was interested in her so listen to this it says so David sent and inquired about the woman and someone said is this not Bathsheba the daughter of Eliam the wife of Uriah the Hittite then David sent messengers and took her and she came to him and he lay with her for she was cleansed from her impurity and she returned to her house so what happened Ahithophel had a son called Eliam Eliam had a daughter called Bathsheba so Bathsheba was a granddaughter of Ahithophel do you get that what happened to Bathsheba David took Bathsheba from Uriah the rightful husband and lay with her took her as wife and all the time Ahithophel was an advisor to David so Ahithophel the grandfather of this girl saw what happened he didn't resign his job he still worked for David giving him advice so to all intents and purposes David feels Ahithophel was his man but something had happened to Ahithophel he was hurt he was angry and he didn't do anything about the anger so the anger became sharp it became bitter the two things you find between Absalom and Ahithophel is that both of them became angry about something they didn't respond they didn't respond they kept quiet for Ahithophel we don't know how many years but for many years at that time uh, uh, Solomon had already been born so we'll probably say a few years uh, maybe five six years I'm not sure so when he is now recruited by Absalom and he's giving advice the advice he's giving is a playback of what David did to his granddaughter he says if David stole my granddaughter from the husband then you to go and take David's wife from him bitterness two men poisoned by events responding years later and here Ahithophel is described as a man of God but look at his advice he's playing back his bitterness Ahithophel is the Miss Havisham of the Old Testament something happened to him and now he's playing it back bitterness has a way of poisoning you so much so that you lose your wisdom you lose your objectivity you lose integrity you forget about everything that you know to be right when you hear bitter people talking you can't even believe they have gone to school bitter people are advising a person you wouldn't think that this person has sat in a classroom by the advice they are giving and all the advice they are giving they are giving it based on something that happened and I'm sure to all intents and purposes David felt Ahithophel was okay but he wasn't okay now let's look at how he ended in a process of time Ahithophel's, you know, he's giving advice and so on. But one time he gives an advice and uh, he was outsmarted by a servant of David called Hushai. So look at 2 Samuel chapter 14, 
sub chapter 7 from verse 14. So Ahithophel gives advice and uh, Hushai gives another advice and Hushai's advice is taken. The Bible says, so Absalom and all the men of Israel said the advice of Hushai the Akite is better than the advice of Ahithophel. For the Lord had purposed to defeat the good advice of Ahithophel to the intent that the Lord might bring disaster on Absalom. Second Samuel chapter 17, go to 17, verse 23. Now when Ahithophel saw that his advice was not followed, he saddled the donkey, arose, went home to his house, to his city. Then he put his household in order and hanged himself and died. And he was buried in his father's house, father's tomb. He killed himself because he was giving advice. The advice he had given was to, would have destroyed David totally. But that advice didn't work. And because David couldn't be destroyed, he kills himself. Ahithophel is saying, for David to live, I will die. Bitter people talk like that. For that man to, be, to live, I will die. They would rather die to see somebody prosper. They would rather die to see some, than to see somebody happy. They would rather die than to see somebody go ahead. There are some people, whenever they see somebody successful, they die. They see somebody riding a car, they die. They see somebody getting promoted, they die. Some of you watch TV and you die. Because people you are bitter against seem to be going on well. And that's what happened to Ahithophel. He said, instead of me being alive, let me kill myself. Because I cannot stand David any longer. In spite of all the bad advice. I'm just here to talk to you about bitterness. We see it in two people's lives. Absalom and David. The question I ask myself is. Why did Absalom choose Ahithophel to recruit? Because bitter people identify bitter people. oh yeah you be bitter in your office you will have your bitterness coalition very soon because bitter people identify other bitter people they have kindred spirits <laughs> when they see another bitter person they can know this one is bitter so they'll recruit him it happens in offices where people begin to poison people not everybody gets infected but other people who have also been hurt those who are bitter Maybe five years ago, your promotion did not come. Two years ago, the boss says something. Three years ago, you were disgraced publicly. Four years ago, something happened. And then a bitter person comes, an Absalom comes, and he goes recruiting. And he's able to isolate all the bitter people. If you become a bitter person and you don't deal with your bitterness, somebody will recruit you into his conspiracy. And if you don't deal with bitterness, you may end up like Ahithophel, killing yourself. You may not physically go and hang yourself, but you will kill everything within you. Your good advice. Can you imagine a man with such pedigree? Spiritual, anointed, wise. He could have done so much with his life. But he ends up hanging himself simply because he couldn't jump over something that someone has done a lot of us get bitter with good reason maybe like absalom somebody has hurt somebody you know or like ahithophel somebody has violated something you know somebody has done something against you and you've kept quiet over it all these years everybody thinks you've solved it but you are the only one who knows the plans you are hatching and you spend time working and working and planning and recruiting and building yourself to launch your attack if you read the end of absalom he ended the same way as ahithophel absalom also hung himself 
not by himself he was riding under a tree and the tree caught his neck he hung ahitophel also hung himself that simply means bitter people end up hanging themselves do they have a case yes did somebody do wrong against them yes they have a case did they handle it well no because although your case is good from the beginning if you don't handle it well that case which should have brought you sympathy will destroy you bitterness is a great destroyer so if you find yourself bitter i'm sure if i ask how many of you are bitter nobody will raise up their hands <laughs> I was, I'm not bitter. Oh, me, I'm not bitter. Oh, I'm not bitter. I'm not bitter. I'm just speaking my mind. I'm not bitter. The thing I've forgotten about it. I'm not bitter. You lie bad. You are bitter. You are bitter, 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 bitter. How do you know? You can't stand somebody. You may even be working for him, but you can't stand him that's what happened i'm sure every time ahitophel will send a file to david's office he can't stand him he's smiling and giving advice but at the back of his head he's planning mischief but david thought he was a loyal person so how do you deal with bitterness first you have to identify people you dislike intensely who are the people just give it a thought you find one or two some of you dislike people intensely sometimes it's your child's husband your child's wife you dislike them intensely they are married but you can't stand it you are waiting for the bad report to show up one day that's bitterness that's bitterness some of you can't stand your parents that's bitterness you say well but, but he did that to me yes it, it, somebody did something against ahitophel too yeah but he hurt me yes he hurt you yes he didn't treat my mother well yes but what is happening to you is that you are developing a root of bitterness and it will poison every good thing that god has put within you so identify the people you dislike you can write down their name <laughs> if your list is too long you need serious psychiatric help <laughs> because some people have have a list 20 people here 30 from secondary school from university <laughs> family members friends there are people who are in their 50s who haven't forgiven somebody when they were eight years who teased them or somebody who beat them when they were eight years they haven't forgot forgiving him they are looking for the chance to pay the person that is bitterness to the eighth degree this is <laughs> this is advanced bitterness it will destroy you unfortunately my friends people get into high office sometimes they become president sometimes they become chief executive sometimes they become pastors sometimes they become big people but everything that is ruling them is bitter were they mistreated yes but now they are being driven by the fuel of bitterness and they infect people and be careful because bitter people can infect you so much you think it's an anointing i'm telling you when people are bitter and they start talking oh they, they will get you they will they will recruit you just now you have to be very careful so identify people you hate intensely are there people you hate you don't like at all it could be hidden dislike or open dislike dislike is dislike the second thing is examine the root causes of your dislike of the people why do you dislike them what did they do what did they say how did they behave what did they take from you did they take your wife did they take your husband did they take your girlfriend 
Did they take your money? Did they disgrace you publicly? Did they insult you? Did they humiliate you? Did they betray you? So much so that now when you hear their name, instantly your heartbeat goes up three notches. It means you have serious issues to deal with. So examine the root causes of the dislike. And most time, you can, if Ahithophel was asked, he will find out why he hated David. Absalom knew why he hated David and Amnon. He knew that. He knew that he could pinpoint to the exact time when the seed of bitterness was sown. And if you think a little bit, you'll get to know. Consider how that bitterness has influenced you over the years and your decisions. Consider the kinds of decisions you've made, the kinds of advice you've given, the kinds of words you've used as a result of that bitterness. Look at your life. What decisions have you been making? What kind of stories have you been telling about people? Fabrications you're making about people? Because they did something you just can't get over. You may be a child of God, born again, spirit-filled, anointed, tongue-talking, used by God, gifts of the spirit. God may even have a greater plan for your life. But bitterness can destroy every good thing in your life. Of David's children, the one who was most honorable was Absalom. Handsome, well-spoken, king in the making. But bitterness destroyed him. Of David's advices, the wisest was Ahithophel. Godly man, devout, but bitterness destroyed him. I'm not talking about bitterness destroying bad people. I'm talking about bitterness destroying good people. People who otherwise would have been good. But didn't live up to their potential. Ask yourself the question. Am I ready to deal with the root causes of bitterness? Am I ready to deal with the root cause? Are you ready to deal with it? For those of you who find yourself around bitter people and you would know when a person is bitter when a, somebody's name when it is mentioned begins to spew forth insult sometimes profanity people start is talking and you know this is not normal anger this anger is coming from somewhere the people start talking and, and everything they say is filthy about that person that person is bitter if you are in an office and there are people in your office who start talking about somebody and any time they say something is bitter they, they it's, it's filthy the people are bitter so what do you do around bitter people psalm 64 verses 2 to 7 gives us some clue and i'm ending with that psalm 64 verse 2 to 7 says hide me from the secret plots of the wicked from the rebellion of the workers of iniquity who sharpen their tongue like a sword and bend their bows to shoot their arrows bitter words that they may shoot in secret at the blameless suddenly they shoot at him and do not fear they encourage themselves in an evil matter manner matter they talk of laziness secretly they say who will see them they devise iniquities we have perfected a shrewd scheme both the inward thought and the heart of men of man are deep but god shall shoot at them with an arrow suddenly they shall be wounded the end of the bitter person the bible says god will shoot at you <laughs> i didn't write the bible god says if you if you carry this bitterness for a long time i'm going to shoot you yourself i'm going to get you because you are poisoning my creation but check out the spirit of the people you hang around sometimes it can even be your parent today is mother's day and let me just say this to mothers a lot of good mothers are also very bitter people good people but extremely bitter and they are bitter because of how they were treated by their husbands 
Some of you mothers had to raise your children by yourselves single-handedly, which is noble, and we appreciate you for that, and we honor God. But in the process, you've allowed what your husband or your boyfriend or whoever did to you to poison you so much that you have infected your children with bitterness. Now your children want to kill their father. You've poisoned them with words, with emotions. You've even spoken curses as if when they ever speak with that man, a curse will come upon them. That is bitterness speaking, mother. God has blessed you. God has helped you. You have raised the children. What more do you want? The man didn't take care of the children, but God took care of the children. The man didn't pay the fees, but look at where they are. Where is the bitterness again? Where are you taking this bitterness? And anytime you sit with your children, you're talking about look at your husband and look at your father and look at him and look at the man. You poison them. And unfortunately, sometimes when they fall in love with somebody else and their affection starts moving from you to them, you can't stand it. Then you transfer bitterness to the people they've fallen in love to. And start crazy. Look at her and look at you and look at her. So, from bitterness, what happened to you is legitimate. You have genuine case, but you have allowed it to bring bitterness into your heart. And now you are becoming an agent of Satan. You are allowing Satan to use you to destroy not only your children. But everybody who comes around your children. If you are a mother here. And you identify that you have bitterness. Deal with it. Deal with it. You may get the children's support for today. But one day. You're going to hang yourself. Bitterness never produces good fruit in the end. If you are here today dealing with bitterness because somebody hurt you so bad you can't, over, you can't overcome it, you can't forgive them. They did something and every time, even when you're praying, you see images. When you're praying, instead of seeing vision of goodness, you're seeing hatching plans. How to destroy them. When you come for prayer meeting, we say, let's pray against our enemies. You know whom you are praying against. And Father, destroy him. And Father, that's your whole prayer life, everything you do is bitter. Today you want to set yourself free. Because if you don't deal with bitterness, it will destroy you.